Back to Cannabis in Canada with Jason Wilcox and another provocative, again, it's been a provocative month, but I mean, I keep saying this over and over and over, the federal government is continuing to harp down on medical patients here in Canada in a host of different ways, including the most recent Section 56 exemption issued by Health Canada that is clearly arbitrary, restrictive, and doesn't conform to the language that was issued by the Supreme Court of Canada in the constitutional landmark decision known as R.V. Smith. Now, this is a serious issue for, the, the, for Canadians to look at. It's a fear-mongering tactic to say, oh, you can't do this, you can't use you know, uh, not, or organic solvents, you can't transport any material. If you're exempt from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, then why listen to some arbitrary Health Canada exemption when the Supreme Court of Canada supersedes any exemption or legislation the government's legislative arm could potentially come up with or have come up with? In fact, our attorneys have instructed us once again to tell you to disregard the Section 56 arbitrary language and follow what the courts have said in R versus Smith being the highest courts in the land and the constitution of this country being the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So on that note, I have Glenn Price here once again in a follow-up meeting uh, or follow-up interview. Um, again, Glenn opened his store today in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba and made a provocative stand there um, where the city police kind of came and threatened him not to open back up. Glenn, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me again, Jason. Always glad to talk to you. Thanks for coming on. So you opened your store today. How did that go? Yes, I was very busy, very busy. Uh, it, was, it was probably, you call it mayhem. There was lots of people, lots of supporters. Uh, Lots of people giving me new prescriptions. Uh, more people than ever signing up to find out where to go to a doctor. That's so I, I think it was very well. That's perfect. So, uh, you know, that's again, that, uh, to our weed warriors out there, to our cannabis fighters, to our freedom fighters, you know, again, taking a stand and reopening and understanding, you know, um, it, it, what it takes to make um, policy change and policy reform in this country takes people to to, uh, to take a stand such as Glenn did today with reopening his store. Now yesterday I understand from uh, social media chatter and other friends that you guys had a sit-in uh, under se section 2 of the charter of course uh, a peaceful assembly at your police department. How'd that go? Yeah, sure. Why, I, I thought it went very well. Like uh, we went there and smoked in front of police. Police walked right by me and they never said anything to me. It seemed like uh, they just were glad that we were there and not disrupting anything. We were peaceful and just wanted to sit and let them know if they want to come to me twice in the building, we, we'll go visit them at least once. No, so our and that's what we did. So our viewers that are watching and coalition members that are out there understand it's very important to uh, make sure that we are not saying that you're at a protest anymore. You're at no. an assembly. No, I'm just saying this for our viewers, uh, Glenn, that our viewers understand that when we go out there, we say we're at a Section 2 peaceful assembly under the Constitution of this country to assemble. And when you do that, it's not a protest because that new legislation, Bill C-51, we're not exactly sure how that ties in, but the word protester is a different word um, than, uh, or a protest than having a peaceful assembly for some reason. So with that being said, um, I, I advise anybody when we're holding our sit-ins and our gatherings that we continue to call them uh, Charter 2 uh, assemblies. Uh, so Glenn, now what happened at the police station? Barring the police, obviously they let you have your assembly, um, let you go ahead and medicate. Were there people doing dabs and stuff like that? Were, were there, was, there, was, it, was it respectful towards the police? Um, uh, you know, were there, were there hecklers or... No, we didn't have no hecklers. I didn't want anything like that. Like, it was just a peaceful sit-in that we wanted to go sit and be heard. And uh, I believe we were. They, they treated me, or all of us, 
in the group fairly. Uh, there was an uh, unrelated incident that happened to the police while we were there. We all viewed it, but uh, I guess they issued a ticket to some guy on the phone, right? Well, he was driving a five-ton truck, and while we were protest or not protesting, sitting and having a smoke in, uh, he was got mad at the police department for issuing him a ticket and destroyed five police cars. Oh, I seen uh, that on the news. That was, was uh, not, sorry. Yeah. I, I seen that on the news. So that actually was associated to the sit-in. No, it wasn't. It had anything to do with the sit-in. It was the police officer uh, gave him a ticket earlier on in the day, and then he took out revenge on the police. Ah, okay, I got it. For being on the phone, it had nothing to do with. Thank God. Awesome. No, but I, it's actually good to see that there, there, there's, of course, they're, they're doing due diligence by looking after the issues that matter in town and not dealing with, um, you know, peaceful cannabis protesters such as the Vancouver police did when they maced some of my friends and tried to prevent Cannabis Day here in Vancouver with a very provocative approach to the cannabis culture. So um, on that note, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about here, Glenn, and, and um, you know, you represent 200 plus members um, in the city of Winnipeg, so you represent a large body of patients, larger than I think any LP could try and claim in the, you know, equally in the city, and you have them all under doctor prescription, and, um, you know, today you had, like you said, the media and a, and a lot of support there. I understand other good activists like Stephen Stairs and others have stepped up to help you as well. Um, how do you see yourself moving forward here, and what's your message to other uh, people in Winnipeg that, that are saying, hey, we want to get involved, we want to come down there. Um, what's your kind of message to them right now, and are you feeling that you're getting the support that you needed now from the city of Winnipeg, or is there more should we, we should do as a collective? Well, we can always do more as a collective group, but I believe I'm getting a lot of support here in Winnipeg right now. Um, like I, when I spoke to you last, I had 225 patients. I believe today I have closer to 400 because Beautiful. of media exposure, right? Beautiful. The media is driving them to me where they wouldn't have found me otherwise. Perfect. So people are finding out about me by media and me being in the paper every day doesn't hurt either, right? That's it. And uh, once again, that's your medicinal cannabis headquarters, everybody, City of Winnipeg. What's the address, Glenn? Uh, 1404A Main Street. Okay, so right the there. Drag. I was just going to say that's right downtown um, uh, Winnipeg. Yeah, pretty close. Okay. Pretty close to downtown. So um, just before, I, I'm going to go to an early commercial break just because there's so many sponsors that I have to thank and, uh, and other things that are, are kind of popping up here in, in, my, in my brain to, to kind of go over with you. Um, what, now, I guess, I guess the biggest question I have is, is what is going to be your position legally um, with, the, with the police or, or with the city of, of Winnipeg, or do you have a disposition moving forward that you're going to approach the city of Winnipeg and ask for some reasonable regulations, maybe similar to what we're seeing in Victoria, uh, Vancouver, and Calgary? That's what I'm hoping for. I've already had put in a letter to Mayor Bowman, and he replied that thank you for writing him, and he would love to sit down with me at some point. Beautiful. So at which point, I don't know how long it's going to take him, but um, I'd sit down, like I said, with anybody from Winnipeg, mayors or counselors or MPs, who have you. I'll sit down with any of them and, and view my points with them at any time. Right. Wow, that's awesome. Well, again, this is big stuff for the city of Winnipeg, and it's big stuff for the cannabis culture. For those that don't understand what it's like to try and do stuff in these small regions, it is nothing like British Columbia. We have it good out here, and same with Ontario. They have it relatively good versus uh, other provinces. So hats off to you, Glenn. Now, as we head off to commercial break here, I want to give a shout-out to the Cannabis Growers of Canada, uh, Green Planet Nutrients, Beard Brothers Society. But there's also, sorry, the Cannabis Rights Coalition. There's MMJ Society, Karuna Medicinal Society, Cottonmouth is just down on Davy here, great glass people, downtown Vancouver, and Red Med Dispensary. 
um, and Red Med S Society. So uh, these are all the people that helped to make this show keep going and keep moving forward. And uh, on that note, we're going to see when we get back from break. I have to take down a few more notes here. My head scrambled from all this stuff within the city of Vancouver and across this great nation as the monopoly continues to move in for supply or moves in on the war over supply and distribution of cannabis in Canada. We'll see you when we get back. Introducing Jade Maple, the only media and consulting company in Canada that utilizes seasoned experts in the cannabis industry. In a growing business environment, it can be hard to hold your ground. Like allies in battle, we help hold your fort from the city's regulations and legal uncertainties. Your energy goes into quality of product. Our energy goes into quality of image. How far do you want to go? Dispensary Solutions at jademaple.com. British Columbia, home to the most beautiful landscapes in the world. Home to mom and pop vineyards, hot springs, farmers markets, some of the world's best skiing, snowboarding, surfing, and mountain biking. We protect our rainforests and keep our air clean. In BC, we strike the right balance between nature and nurture. But did you know that for the last 30 years, BC has also been home to the finest cannabis in the world? BC Bud is world renowned for its taste, aroma, and potency. We've competed in one cups, gained recognition from international celebrities. We are the cannabis growers of Canada. We create wealth, opportunity, and good paying private sector jobs. The BC cannabis crop is worth over $7 billion a year, and there were over 17,000 farms creating work for Canadians and improving the lives of millions of people. We are joining together to build a free and fair cannabis market that benefits all Canadians. Won't you come and join us at cannagrowers.ca? On our opening day, Cannabis Day, just flowing here and uh, just celebrating. It's a big celebration. So yeah, here we are and uh, yeah, just hanging out with the Beard Brother Society and talking to members and talking to friends and kind of having a good day today. Pretty rad. Uh, we're pretty excited. Put a lot of uh, time and effort into this and uh, a lot of hard work and finally here, here we are. I know I'm making good quality medicine and these people are feeling amazing as they walk out the door, you know, and that's a big pat on the back for both of us, you know, that's heart wrenching for me, man, so I, I like to hold on to those moments. Website is beardbros.ca and you can email us at info at beardbros.ca and go to our website and we will answer all your questions and sign you up and run you through everything you need to know.
Okay, well, welcome back to Canvas Granite. Okay, so we're just going to continue going on here. I am beat up and battered. I can tell you we've been having backdoor meetings, closed meetings. We want you to think about what we're doing because, oh, yeah, we're doing stuff and we're getting our legal advice. We're strategizing. We're expanding the coalition's mandate. We're doing all kinds of stuff, and I'd love to tell you about it, but I can't. I can just tell you it's going to get exciting. Um, on that note, now, Glenn, you mentioned something here that I, I found interesting. You would like to see more dispensaries open in your area and kind of take a stand similar to, you, to, to yourself, um, or at least open up and take a shot. Um, what would be your message to your fellow brothers and sisters in Winnipeg that potentially might come in and, uh, and join some sort of collective and, and open a dispensary? Uh, come to me, I'll give them whatever advice I can give them and then tell them to go ahead and do it. Just do it like I did it. You know, uh, get proper occupancy permits while the city can't bother you, get your registered name and all that, do it proper, and then just come out and do it like I, like I did. I've never hit, when I, when I started this, I've never hit it from government or anybody else. And I'm not about to now. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. The, the patient stories are, are what's keeping me going. Like, that's, that's the bottom line. It's just from helping the patient, the stories they tell me, I can't quit now. I just can't because the federal government is doing nothing for us. Nothing for them because if they were, we wouldn't be here in this situation right now, would we? You know, that, that, that's a very well put point, and, and it's something that, you know, people that don't know me, my viewers, some people don't understand that passion often comes across as aggression, and the one thing that many of us have is passion, and many of us have come to see that um, the good collectives, the good nature of uh, frontline people that want to work with medical patients is being tromped on by people who want to monopolize uh, an industry under legalization, and certainly... Um, you know, they don't stand to benefit a lot off some medical gain, and they do stand to benefit if they shut down any medical dispensaries or any sort of uh, competition. It's part of the reason, in my own opinion, they made up the lies about fire mold and organized crime in the Allard case, which is where the federal government of Canada is the defendant. That's why there's no R versus Allard. It's we put the government of Canada on trial, and they were the defendant, and that's still before the courts with Justice Feeling to have a decision. However, if that is one, it's case precedent setting and all the medical patients in this country that helped pay for that case, that quarter million dollar case, can give themselves a pat on the back and say, you know what, we set case precedents in the country of Canada under the Constitution for gardens in this country, starting with the medical patients, moving on to when we legalize. On that note, Glenn, what do you, what's your take here on the regular, now right next door to you, you got Calgary regulating dispensaries. They're saying uh, they're I, saying go ahead. They're go ahead and regulate. Now, that my understanding, there are no dispensaries in Calgary. How the hell are you going to regulate something that doesn't exist? Well, that's that's another way of the federal government taking monopolizing us and uh, shutting, trying to shut the door on us. So someone should open a dispensary before they can get regulated. There is what I think should happen before they even start regulating it someone open the door then there you know here I am regulate me and I'm here and to be fair it, that is Harper town I almost think it's done on purpose they're doing that just to bait and switch you know go ahead and open up in Harper town and see what happens I say maybe the coalition should pop something open in Harper town I don't know all I know is that the government's picking a fight with the cannabis culture that's been peaceful they're picking a fight with the medical patients they've once again coming out with such a stupid ridiculous arbitrary section 56 exemption that we have to advise our members to disregard the legislative arm of this country that's in charge of health shame on canada you know it's a sad time in canada when we the medical patients have to spend thousands of dollars lots of effort and fighting to try and help ourselves with a plant that has no lethal dose rate, it has no addiction, and it has no toxicity factors. In fact, caffeine is more dangerous, addictive, and toxic than frigging cannabis. It's very hard for me to continue to go through this fight as we see our brothers and sisters potentially face mandatory minimums under Bill C-10. And the conservative governments and the LPs are sitting back laughing, ha, 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 we got them. I say if jail didn't 
stop the cannabis industry in America where there is mandatory minimums. It's not going to stop the underground here. What's going to happen is a massive price war if they force dispensaries underground. If they force a massive price war, it's just going to cause a big problem for the justice, or the justice departments, um, the taxpayers, and in general in lawsuits in, in a price war that, and frankly, I don't think the licensed producers are going to win because my understanding is they're only servicing about 25,000 people, and that's really sad considering they've been open for, you know, uh, almost a year. So what's your thought, thoughts on some of that, Glenn? Because I'd like to get perspectives from, you know, different regions. Like in your region, um, are people fully informed and up to date and, and alert to both R versus Smith, like the language that they need to disregard what Health Canada is trying to say and listen to the Constitution of Canada, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, if you have it? Not all of them are, and that's why I'm here to try and educate people at Winnipeg. Uh, what's happening all over the, all over Canada with cannabis and stuff too on my Facebook page. That's why I have a Facebook page, uh, so people can get knowledge and what's happening with me in the media and when I'm reopening and whatever troubles I occur, I put it out on the Facebook right away. And when the police come, I did it right away. What's the name of your they Facebook page? The What's the name of your Facebook page so people can find you? Your Medical Cannabis Headquarters. There you go. Your Medical Cannabis Headquarters. Check them out on Facebook. Stay up to date with what Glenn's doing. Um, now, we can carry this on here a little bit more, Glenn, in just uh, closing out because I'd like to hear more. I'm glad you're educating your members. Knowing that you represent over 200 plus makes me want to come see you in Winnipeg. I will be in Saskatchewan for the Saskatchewan Cup. You know, it, it would, might be an opportunity for us to get together. Uh, I really respect weed warriors that stand up. I don't like even calling it weed. It's cannabis. For me, it's medicine. But at the same time, we're standing up for a free and fair market in this country. There's been a top-down monopoly that's been built under the premise of medical when, as our health minister so rightly puts, there's no damn medical value to marijuana. I've been saying it for over three years on this show, and people thought I was crazy. The health minister's not crazy. There's no medical value. What's crazy is that $25 million companies can be set up in this country as a monopoly top-down system forcing patients to buy from them and for when they, they're actually set up for legalization so all of you can buy from them. That's a monopoly, not the Canadian way. Unethical, unreasonable, sure as hell doesn't conform to liberty. Sorry, man, I had to rant. What's your thoughts on some of that crap, Glenn? Because that's to me, you know, this is at my front lines and my passion and my heart and why I keep doing what I do. I sure as hell don't get paid enough for this, but I do believe I'm getting rewarded enough in ethics and in karma uh, in working with the patients. Uh, and as a 20-year activist, that's an advocate that's kind of at the forefront of what I do. So what's your thoughts on some of this as we close out this, uh, this follow-up interview? And, of course, we're going to do more. Anything, any, anytime you got some break, breaking news, some, something that evolves there, we want to certainly follow it here on Cannabis in Canada, either live on our show or through our blog in some capacity, and keep your members informed. So, um, yeah, what's some of your thoughts on that little bit of a rant I went on there? Well, you have every right to rant, you know. Like uh, you said, we definitely don't get paid enough. We work way too many hours, and uh, but it's the patients that keep us going, right? That's, that's what keeps us going is the patients and the stories that they, they tell us. Like, I don't know how in Vancouver is a little different than Winnipeg. Winnipeg is, you know, small compared to Vancouver. I, I take the small town approach. I know everybody that comes into my store. I know people that walk by my store. So that's just, you know, the way that it is. And that's why everybody's coming back to me. They, they're already considering me family like I, I'll say again I got a soldier boy I'll help if the police are right in front of me I'll give it to him it's, I don't care I'll get arrested if that's what it takes he come in here with his girlfriend after me helping him for a month and a half to introduce his girlfriend to me so that's showing me that they're thinking of me as family already and I, I, the way I was raised you would never turn your back on family so as long as they consider me family, I'll keep helping everybody in Winnipeg. And that's a real passionate warrior that is part of the cannabis culture. I wish I could say the same for the city of Vancouver. However, there are people that just simply are not here for the culture anymore. 
They're here to benefit their pocketbooks and their profit margins, and that's unfortunate. But you know what? To each their own. Everybody has to benefit themselves and seek the house on the hill or get their ass kicked off the hill, whichever happens in the process. So be it. Um, I choose to stay on one side of the party line. Um, and for those that crossed it, you know, wish you well. And I just wish they would stay out of what they pretend to say that they're part of the culture. If you're part of this culture, you don't sell it out. You know, and there's just been more and more people that I was offered that $100,000 check. I turned it down. You know, a friend of mine works for a company that I turned it down from. I'm happy all for that. But at the same time, if you leave the culture, leave. Don't stay here and pretend that you're not part of that LP agenda. That LP agenda is false. It's set up under a false premise. It needs to be exposed to the general public and not sold to the sick and dying Canadians of Canada, let alone the cannabis culture of Canada, who have not fought for legalization to buy from a federal monopoly top-down system that would have their barking dogs, the RCMP and local police, like Winnipeg Police and Vancouver Police, do all the execution orders to shut us down, force us underground, and it's still, it's only gonna start a gas war, a price war. Anybody seen a gas price war before, they know what the hell I'm talking about. The only difference is the underground, underground can drop down to two to three dollars a gram. There I go ranting again on you, Glenn. I'm sorry, man, but I'm just, hey, I'm, I'm fired I'm up tonight. With that. If they want to push us underground, that's what will happen. There won't be no more government dispensers because they won't be making any money. Well, that's it. That's really? what I'm worried about. But forcing us underground displaces the patients. Obviously, if 200 plus patients in the city of Winnipeg alone and 50% of all federal licenses being um, whatever, there's 40,000 registered MMAR, so 20,000 of them are here in British Columbia. That's a huge number of medical patients. Now, you represent, um, you represent 200 in the city of Winnipeg that access your dispensary. I think there's 94 here in Vancouver that the city said, and of those 94, there's maybe going to be 20 left. And as it's been well put by, you know, the recent panel held here at the conference and others have said, there's likely only going to be 25 dispensaries. You guys out there want to look it up, check out CanadaCanada.ca, look at the exclusion map. It's when unchallenged. I beg you to challenge us online. You know, this is real life. This monopoly is top down, it's moving in, and people that don't understand the word compliance is the same as legalization. It's open-ended without a model. And that word compliance can be struck in the model at any time and tweaked as they see fit. Anything else you want to say here, Glenn, just as we pose out, uh, close out? Because I'm just, I'm completely, um, I'm beat up. I'm probably going to go into a bit more of a closing rant here. But, um, you know, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to certainly rally our troops and get a message out there and certainly let, let the monopoly know that we're not done. You know, no. as I said before, this isn't over. No, by far it's not over. Like... If, if I get arrested once, I'll sit down with some people and then I'll devise a game plan and I'm going to come back. I'm not going to gonna run and hide. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's, that's the unfortunate part. I don't think anybody should have to run and hide. I think the unfortunate part is that Joe Average in Canada doesn't realize that millions of dollars, the taxpayers' dollars, is being spent to fight medical patients' rights to reasonable access that was granted over a freaking decade ago. And then they build a, a multi million dollar conspiracy in my own opinion but they say the MMPR marijuana for medical purposes and the health minister says there's no medical value to marijuana Joe average taxpayer should be very upset on this particular issue and I understand people don't know a lot about cannabis but we have doctors on camera who tell you it's preventative medicine at the least you could have Parkinson's running in your family, you could have cancer, and just by virtue of using cannabis, it ain't recreational. Unless you're an alien, you got CB1 and CB2 receptor cells, and by virtue of that, your endogenous system accesses cannabinoids. So by virtue of using it, it's medical, my friends. That's what we need to understand. But it's medicinal, herbal. It doesn't need to be governed like a gun. Remembering that it's not toxic, it's not addictive, and there's no lethal death rate meaning there's no lethal death dose that a human can take. So save the kids doesn't work for cannabis. Keep them away from the alcohol and the pills. Glenn, any closing remarks? Actually, you know what? You're saying about alcohol and that. Peanuts kill more people than uh, uh, weeds ever have in a year. That's so true. 
this is one of my biggest issues out here with the Save the Kids and all this other stuff, is that there isn't a Save the Kids issue when there's pills in the cupboard, there's friggin', there's alcohol in the fridge, there's chemicals underneath, you know, kids used to spray Pam in a goddamn bag and huff on it, you know, they used to smell or sniff glue, it's still available in the store, you know, you can't stop certain things. And cannabis is the least of your worries, because the worst thing that's going to happen is your kid's going to go to sleep. Where if they get drunk, they can stumble out and get hit by a freaking car. Huge difference. Or kill somebody. Yeah, or kill somebody getting behind the freaking wheel. These are the issues that we have to look at realistically, real education with the society, and get off the reefer madness train of 70 years that has lied and manipulated Canada, and now wants to turn around and say, we've had a 180 degree turnaround, look, it's medical, and we want to govern it. And we set up this whole thing, you know, only they don't want to tell you that part. I'm here to tell you that's what they're doing. And the more we can expose it, the more we will. But that's what they're doing. They've set up a top-down monopoly under the premise of medical. And shame on Canada and the legislative arm to actually come back and challenge the Supreme Court of Canada, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, thing we hold most dear in this country. Challenge our Constitution, Rona Ambrose, and Health Canada, with a Section 56 arbitrary restrictive goddamn exemption that exempts us from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. It's actually, ah, it just drives me nuts. I feel like almost like, you know, like there's, there's other people out there that do these podcasts and they just go nuts and I just want to tear shit up. That's how I feel right now. Rona, you think you got outraged? Look what you've done to the medical patients of Canada and the legislative arm. Now you come out and you say you got outraged against the Supreme Court of Canada? My God, you come back with a Section 56 exemption. I, I'm just glad we can't sue you. That's one thing that you guys know. You changed your policies, and just so all the Canadians know, we can't sue the government for policy change. We can only challenge what's constitutionally not sound. And I guarantee you once again, and I'm saying it here on CanadaCanada.ca, if you legislate Health Canada like you just tried to give an exemption, you will be met with full force with Section 7 and Section 1 constitutional challenges because you're clearly being arbitrary and restrictive on Section 1 and Section 7. We face persecution. Most importantly, you're completely ignoring the, the Supreme Court of Canada's own language. We can use cannabis in all of its forms. What part of that don't you understand? Just because your LPs can't supply freaking edibles yet doesn't mean you can legislate something like that on personal autonomy. Patients have a right to consume it however the hell they want. Stay out of our lives, stay out of our right to autonomy. On that note, this is Jason Wilcox. I want to thank you once again, Glenn Price, for coming on the show. Um, keep standing your ground, brother. Keep in touch. Everybody, stay tuned to CanvasCanada.ca. Once again, shout out to all of our sponsors that were mentioned. I, you know, To go through the list again is just going to be very, very long. Um, they are there at our website, constantly being rotated and at the end of our shows. But um, thanks to everybody that makes this happen. Guys, it's time for us to understand that we're being forced underground. We're building out. And as this community collectives build out, the monopoly needs to get pushed back. Failure to push back a monopoly means that we simply conform to a model like the Netherlands. And I ain't down for that. On that note, this is Jason Wilcox, always standing up for the right for freedom, signing out. Very strange how this creature goes right for this cannabis plant. Little does it know it needs a license. It's not threatened at all by government bureaucracy. I believe they call this species the chicken. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again.